So in all of this emphasis on things that change, I guess the other point that's relevant is that there are things, especially for cooperatives, that don't change. This is, uh, or don't change, uh, don't change in their fundamentals. They may change in the forms they take. So we know that uh, when we're looking at people, no matter how global things get, uh, most people live in particular places. They interact with others in particular places. So the impacts of globalization, however general they are, have an impact in specific communities. They're local, and the action, the responses that people take are usually still local as well. Trust, loyalty, connectedness are things that help people work together, and that's just as true in 2011 as it was in 1844 when the Rochdale pioneers formed their early consumer co-op. People need to rediscover cooperation, or in many cases, discover it for the first time under, these, uh, uh, under today's conditions. And that process of discovery or rediscovery will resemble what's gone on in the past in the history of our cooperatives and in the history of other cooperatives. So among all the bewildering variety of things that we might think of that affect cooperatives, what are some of the most important things to keep in mind? I think in many ways it's about members, it's about markets, and it's about the relationship between the two of them. So that's what I want to spend a few minutes talking about this morning. Members are, of course, critical to cooperatives, and globalization, the turbulence in our economy, has lots of impacts on members. Uh, members feel those impacts economically, uh, disadvantageously to many of them with the changes we've had in recent years, but, but of course advantageously for some of them. Members become more differentiated because they have different experiences of globalization and its impacts in their communities. And they also have changing attitudes and concerns that will be influenced by what they see going on them and around the world. So members are changing right now as we speak in response to the impacts on our economy and our society. Markets are also changing. Uh, prices are changing, competition is changing. Uh, we heard a little bit about that yesterday as well. Uh, there's a new, um, a new kind of economy that's developing out there and it has impacts on cooperatives as well as on the members. So this change in members and change in markets can mean a whole lot of change for co-ops because these things are very important to us. I often think about the ICA's definition of a cooperative. I think this is a really important statement. People often talk about the co-op principles, the list of the guidelines that many cooperatives follow. But this is actually the ICA's definition of a co-op. An autonomous association of people united voluntarily to meet common economic, social, and cultural needs and aspirations through a jointly owned and democratically controlled enterprise. And one of the critical things about this definition, one of the things that I think they got right when uh, uh, Professor Ian McPherson and his committee put this definition together, is they put in the word association and they put in the word enterprise. And a cooperative is both those things. Every cooperative everywhere, by definition, is both an association of people, a democratic association, and it's an enterprise. And an enterprise is something that takes risks. It acts in markets of some kind. It's exposed to success and failure. Um, and it, uh, it has some kind of a bottom line that it needs to meet. That combination or that dual character of being an association and an enterprise is an important thing to think about when times are changing. Co-ops to be really successful, to be completely successful, need to be successful associations as well as successful enterprises. They need to engage and involve members, have a common sense of identity, but they also have to succeed in markets. And that uh, puts them in an interesting situation when it comes to uh, turbulent economic times. Now, a number of years ago, and I know uh, a, a number of you are familiar with this, I did some thinking about some strategic concepts for guiding um, strategy and planning in cooperatives. And I know some of you have found these uh, to be helpful. They're intended to be, uh, to be helpful. Um, and these are concepts that I defined the way I did uh, because I wanted to get at this interconnection of the association and the enterprise, the business and the membership. So I certainly think it's important, I guess I see when I look at cooperatives, that linkage between the co-op and the members, economic linkage, business linkage, is frequently something that is a sign of a long-lasting and strong and successful cooperative. One of the ways I think about that linkage 
is when you see a system where the co-op and the members benefit economically from each other's success, that creates a really tight linkage over time. So why do we have uh, patronage refunds, for example, in consumer co-ops? It's a way for the members to know that if the cooperative succeeds and generates a surplus, that they, the members, will benefit from that and will share in it. Not anyone else, but the members will benefit and share in the surplus. I think cooperatives are also about transparency, that members can see how the co-op works, uh, can understand its mechanisms, price mechanisms, governance mechanisms, but they can also see where the co-op fits in the market, what the co-op does for them that wouldn't happen if the co-op wasn't there. That's a really important point. What the co-op does for the members that the members wouldn't have if the co-op wasn't there. For a new co-op, that's an easy thing to put across because people can see the impact when a new cooperative enters a market. If you have a cooperative that's been around for a generation, a generation and a half, starting to turn over the original group of leaders, sometimes it's hard to keep that idea alive because the people who've joined the co-op will tend to take it for granted. They won't realize as easily that if the co-op wasn't there, there's something that they'd be missing. So the only, the only way to keep that idea alive is through education and through engagement of members in decision making. And I think cognition or thinking, strategy, planning in cooperatives is also critical. Organizations think, they perceive changes in their environment, they analyze what's going on, they consider options, and they make choices. Every organization does that, but you, know, you can do it better sometimes than other times. And organizations that are very good at sensing change and at responding to it are going to do better when times are changing quickly. So those are some concepts that I think are, are uh, critical in cooperatives. And I think that if anything, these um, uh, ideas like linkage, like transparency, like cognitive processes in organizations are more important in an era of globalization like we have today. So there's examples of this. I mentioned uh, some of them along the way. We see examples of this sort of linkage, transparency, cognitive processes in the economic policies of cooperatives, in the way they develop new services, in the way they renew their identity and make strategic plans. What's different when times are turbulent is the pressure on the co-op uh, from the changes in the markets and the changes in the membership. And I was trying to think of a way to present this visually and what I came up with uh, was the following. The idea of alignment, that when things are working well, what you've got is members and a co-op that's meeting their needs. You've got a co-op that has a niche in the market and that is economically successful and it all lines up that what the members are getting from the co-op is an economically viable, sustainable, successful service uh, that has its place in the market. Uh, you cultivate this alignment in a whole variety of ways. It's about the business, it's about the planning, it's about all of those connections between the co-op and its members and the market on the other side. So when times are good and when the co-op is functioning well, I think that's kind of the picture. But when there's change, I think you can end up in a situation like this. The market has moved on, the co-op is still connected with its members, but it's struggling to find a, 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 an economically viable role. So this is an example where the co-op is uh, an economically successful way of keeping doing something that's important to the members. The members still are connected to the co-op, but the co-op isn't relevant in the market, and eventually, sooner or later, it's likely to struggle financially. I think you can also have this kind of a situation where the co-op moves with the market and leaves the members behind. So here you have an economically successful co-op, but the members no longer understand what it does for them. Uh, it's not tied to them, they don't see the benefit from it. And last of all, I think of course you could end up in this situation, which is <laughs> the market's moved on, the members have moved on, the co-op is left behind. So you, could, you don't want to end up there. So what, what do you do in a situation like this? So here's where, you know, I thought of this word stretch, but it's a stretch by the co-op to remain connected to the members, to remain connected to the market, and to pull the two together and keep them, keep them connected. So to do this, the co-op's going to have to change somewhat. It's going to have to bring the members along to understand that, and it's going to have to find some new ways to connect to where the market has moved to. So I think 
w turbulent times, right? What does it mean for co-ops? I think for a lot of co-ops, it means stretch, and that means strain, and that means tension, and that means some anxiety as you go through this process. So what's it like to stretch? It involves embracing uncertainty, and I want to talk about the idea of imagination as, a, as an important piece of how we deal with a changing environment. It's about innovations in business. It's about innovations in member education. It's also about organizational identity. And I think most of all, it's about keeping all of that together, moving in the same direction at the same time. So can we innovate in our business? Can we innovate in our membership engagement? Can we do that in a way that remains aligned with a niche in the market that's viable for our co-ops? So when we think about uh, reinvention of cooperatives, cooperatives around the world are reinventing themselves. There are all kinds of new forms and experimental forms. There's, uh, and I guess I'd say simply change is the new normal. Change is the new normal. It's, a, it's always been there, but it's more intense than ever before. But in looking at change, we can also go back to the fundamentals. And for cooperatives, the fundamentals will always have something to do with members and with markets. There's a number of things we can do to promote the alignment and the success of co-ops. We can seek to innovate both in the associative aspects of our cooperatives and in the business aspects. We can strengthen economic linkage with members, increase transparency, develop the cognitive processes, uh, make our co-ops smarter uh, through, their, uh, through their planning and their, uh, their uh, governance. We can engage our stakeholders, and what it all comes to is reimagining cooperation. Imagination matters to cooperatives. Uh, what might be the best for the current generation of cooperatives may not be suited to the generation to come or to the circumstances that we're going to see in five or ten years. Imagination is what allows us to anticipate um, how our members will change, how our communities will change, how our cooperatives will change. Imagination is what allows us to keep up. Imagination is what will allow our cooperatives to help create what comes next.